this episode was difficult for me to research and write. I say this because I was a freshman in high school at the time it occurred. I remember the constant news reports. At the time, I was the only student in a class of 300 who dressed in all black regularly and got harassed frequently about it and was even accused of eventually following in Clay Wolden Harris's footsteps. I remember all too often reading the graffiti all over the bathroom stalls at school, how I would become the next school shooter after this massacre. It was difficult to comprehend at the time. Many of the victims of this massacre were the same age as me. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. The Columbine High School Massacre was perpetrated by Eric David Harris and Dylan Bennett Claybold on April 20th, 1999 in Columbine, Colorado. The duo murdered 13 people and wounded 24 others before committing suicide in the school's library. Eric Harris was born on April 9, 1981 in Wichita, Kansas. His mother was a homemaker while his father worked for the United States Air Force as a transport pilot, which led to the family moving around a lot. In a 1997 English class assignment, Harris wrote about his difficulties moving from New York to Colorado. Though his family moved around a lot, this move was the most difficult for him, because he had developed the most memories and friendships in Plattsburgh than any other place he had lived. He continued that when he left his friends, he felt alone, lost, and agitated. According to a tape which was found in his basement after the massacre, Harris blamed his father for all of this. Because of the constant moving around which forced Eric to constantly start at the bottom of the ladder over and over again. What added insult to injury was the constant mocking he received from his peers over his appearance. However, the classmates who survived the attack had a different perspective on Harris's time at Columbine High School. He moved to the school as a freshman in 1995 where he gained many friends and even joined the school's soccer team. His teammate, Josh Swanson, has stated that Eric was a solid player who enjoyed the sport a lot. The same year, Harris met Tiffany Typher in German class and asked her to homecoming, which she accepted. After the event, Typher, for reasons which were made unclear, chose not to see Harris anymore, and even refused to socialize with him. After which, Harris staged a fake suicide attempt where he sprawled on the ground with fake blood covering him. When Typher witnessed this, she began to scream for help, at which point Harris and his friends began laughing. This caused Typher to storm off, shouting that Eric needed to get psychological help. Dylan Claybold was born September 11, 1981 to pacifists who attended a Lutheran church in Lakewood, Colorado, but also observed some rituals in keeping with Dylan's maternal grandfather's Jewish heritage. For the first two years of his school life, Dylan attended Normandy Elementary School, but then transferred to Governor's Ranch Elementary School for challenging high intellectual students. He eventually transferred to Ken Carroll Middle School, where he found it incredibly difficult and didn't fit in very well, to which his parents just brushed off his discomfort as normal child behavior. During his early school years, Dylan played baseball, soccer, and t-ball. He was also in the Cub Scouts. Shortly after Harris and Claybold met each other, they became best friends and formed a tight-knit group with Nathan Dykeman. Harris and Claybold worked together after school at Blackjack Pizza, attended bowling class together, and were interested in computers. Many described Harris as charismatic and likable. However, Eric often bragged about his ability to deceive others. By junior year, Harris was known to be quick to anger and threaten people with bombs. It was at this point when classmates began to learn that Harris was fascinated by war and wrote out violent fantasies about killing people he didn't like. The two friends often made videotapes together, which have become known as the Basement Tapes, and enjoyed playing the video game Doom over a private server they connected their personal computers to. The pair were inseparable by junior year, and often sat alone together at lunch and kept to themselves. Eventually, a rumor began to circulate that Harris and Claybold were gay and romantically involved, in a time when homosexuality wasn't as welcome as it is today. Though Eric Harris was more well-liked and accepted by the student population, Dylan Claybold wrote in his journals that he felt he wasn't accepted or loved by anyone. It's believed that Claybold sought validation from Harris and that Harris's rage intermingled with Claybold's self-destructive personality, which caused the boys to feed off each other, entering into an infernal friendship. At school, the two were active in school play production, creative video productions, and even became computer assistants. Conflicting reports stated that Harris and Claybold were either targets of bullying or that those claims were false. 
Early reports stated the pair were a part of a clique known as the Trenchcoat Mafia, but this was confirmed to not be the case at all. Three days before the massacre, Dylan attended the high school prom with his classmate Robin Anderson. On January 30th, 1998, Harrison Claybold broke into a locked van in order to steal computers and other electronic equipment. They were immediately pulled over by an officer, and they admitted to the theft. They were charged with mischief, breaking and entering, trespassing, and theft, but left a good impression on the juvenile officers who offered to expunge their criminal records if they agreed to attend a diversionary program, which included community service and psychiatric treatment. Harris was required to attend anger management classes, and their probation officer discharged them from the program a few months ahead of schedule for good behavior. In December of 1998, the two made a video for school project entitled Hitmen for Hire, where they swore, yelled at the camera, made violent statements, and acted out shooting and killing students in the hallway of Columbine High School. They each also displayed themes of violence in their creative writing projects, to which Harris's teacher wrote, Yours is a unique approach, and your writing works in a gruesome way. Good details and mood setting. The pair were unable to acquire the guns they used during the massacre in illegal ways due to both being underage. However, Claybold enlisted the help of Robin Anderson, who was 18 at the time, to make a straw purchase of two shotguns and a high point carbine for the pair. In exchange for her cooperation with the investigation after the massacre, no charges were filed against her. Claybold sawed off his Savage 311 D12 gauge double barrel shotgun, which shortened its length to approximately 23 inches long while Harris sawed off his Springfield 12 gauge pump shotgun to around 26 inches long. The two also came to possess a Tech DC-9 semi-automatic handgun, homemade pipe bombs which they placed in the school in order to funnel the students population to specific points where they could open fire on them. On April 20th, 1999, just a few short weeks before the two were due to graduate, the first gunshots were heard by Brooks Brown, a former friend of Eric Harris's, at 11.19 in the morning. The massacre lasted less than an hour, and 12 students and one teacher were killed, with 24 others injured. The first to be killed was Rachel Scott, who was having lunch with her friends on the lawn outside the school's library. Reports indicate that Eric Harris mocked her faith as a Christian before shooting her multiple times in the head, chest, arm, and leg. Daniel Robero was the second victim when he was headed out of the cafeteria with friends when Harrison Claybold opened fire outside. Shots fired by Dylan Claybold hit him in the abdomen and left leg. A few moments later, Claybold shot him again at point blank range in the chest, at which time he bled to death on the sidewalk outside the school, where he remained for nearly two hours before paramedics were allowed to move in. There was speculation in the press at the time that Daniel had been killed by friendly fire from SWAT. However, this was completely inaccurate. Computer and business teacher Dave Sanders was the third to be shot, but the last to die on the day of the massacre. By the time Harris and Claybold made their way to the cafeteria, it was nearly empty of students, thanks to Sanders, and by the time he was shot from behind by both gunmen, with shots to the neck, head, and trunk, he was upstairs trying to get students safely hidden in a classroom. After he was shot, he managed to pull himself into a science lab, where he bled to death, waiting for help. 911 dispatchers told the students who were helping him that help was coming, but it never arrived. Kyle Velasquez was the next in the path of Claybold and Harris. Velasquez had suffered a stroke early on which left him mentally disabled, and he had severe asthma. He had been sitting at one of the computer tables in the school's library when the duo entered. He was unaware how to hide from them, and so he curled up under the table where Claybold shot him in the back of the head as he passed by, at which point he died instantly. The youngest victim of the massacre was Steve Kernow, who was shot in the neck by Eric Harris while hiding under one of the computer tables in the library. He was followed by Cassie Bernal, who had been studying in the library when the shooting began. When she heard shots, she, like the others, hid under a table. After slapping the top of the table twice with his hand, Eric Harris said to her, and another girl, peekaboo, before bending down and pointing his sawed off shotgun under the table, firing once hitting Cassie in the head, at which point she died immediately. The next victim was Isaiah Scholes, who was someone the shooters had a problem with before the attack. Isaiah was under a table with others, but when Claybold saw him under the table, he called Harris over and they flanked the table on either side, at which time Claybold made a racist comment and tried to pull him out from under the table. When that failed, Harris opened fire, hitting Isaiah in the chest, killing him. Due to the overheard racist remark, his parents later claimed the entire assault was race-related, 
even though Isaiah was the only black person killed during the massacre. Alongside Isaiah was Matt Ketcher, who was shot immediately after by Claybold, striking him in the chest, killing him. Another of the library victims was Lauren Townsend, who, like the others, hid under a table. Lauren was next to a very frightened Valene Schnur at the time and put her arm around her and drew her close, telling her everything would be okay. After several minutes, Dylan Claybold went to the table they were hiding under and opened fire, hitting Lauren several times in the head, chest, and lower body. A few minutes later, Eric Harris shot under the table and hit Lauren again after she had already died. The next victim was John Tomlin, who was also studying in the library at the time of the shootings and was hiding under a table when Harrison Claybold entered. He welcomed Nicole Nolan into his hiding space and held her hand as she grew scared. Without bending over to see who was under the table, Eric Harris opened fire on John and Nicole, injuring them both, at which point Dylan Claybold then came around the table and shot John at point-blank range in the head, killing him instantly. Kelly Fleming was left visible when Harrison Claybold entered the library due to there not being enough room under the table she was at. Claybold fired under the table once, injuring two of the girls who were with her, and then fired again, hitting Lauren in the chest, killing her. As Eric Harris approached the table that Daniel Mauser was hiding under, Mauser pushed a chair in front of him as a possible attempt to knock the shooter over. Outraged, Harris taunted him by saying nice glasses and then shot him in the face. The final victim shot by the duo was Corey DePooter, who was hiding under a desk when Dylan Claybold shot him three times in the neck, chest, and left arm with a Tech 9. Those injured in the massacre, according to where they were attacked, were Richard Castaldo, Lance Kirkland, Sean Graves, Michael Johnson, Mark Taylor, and Anne Marie Hotchhalter, who were all outside the school, Brian Anderson, Patty Nelson, Stephanie Munson, Nicholas Foss, Joyce Jankowski, Adam Kyler, and Trista Morell were inside the school on Claybold and Harris's path to the library. Those injured in the library were Evan Todd, McKay Hall, Patrick Ireland, Daniel Steepleton, Casey Rugsager, Lisa Krutz, Valene Schnur, Mark Kinkin, Nicole Nolan, Gina Park, Jennifer Doyle, and Austin Eubanks. Investigators later discovered that Harrison Claybold had enough ammunition on them to have killed every last person in that library had they so chosen to. The two shooters eventually left the library, at which time those who survived the onslaught fled. It's believed that Harrison Claybold eventually returned to the library to watch their car bombs detonate, which had been set to explode at noon. When the bombs failed, the two went to the west windows and opened fire on the police outside. No one was injured during this part of the attack, but by 12.08 in the afternoon, the two had killed themselves. Harris sat down with his back to a bookshelf and fired his shotgun through the roof of his mouth. Claybold then went down to his knees and shot himself in the left temple with his Tech-9. Later reports stated that the two could be heard by survivors saying, One, two, three, in unison before pulling their triggers on themselves. Controversy arose after the massacre as some felt that Harris and Claybold were also victims and should be memorialized. Crosses for each of the lives lost were erected atop a hill near the high school, but Daniel Robbero's father cut down the crosses intended for the two shooters, feeling that they should not be memorialized in the same place as their victims. Investigators later discovered that the two had written more about how they would carry out the massacre and less about why. In one entry, Harris mentioned the Oklahoma City bombing and his wish to outdo it by causing the most deaths in U.S. history. To this day, it's still unknown as to why they committed the assault, and much speculation has been given over bullying, admiration of Nazis, gothic subculture, and even music, with Marilyn Manson being pinned by the media as part of the cause. Many speculations have also been made over Harris and Claybold's psychological traits, going so far as to diagnose them post-mortem, which should never be done. Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher called by high school. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window. I believe one thing. Uh, um, I've been called by high school. I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just the last thing you do, but. Okay, has anybody been injured, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the school is in a panic, and I'm in the library. I've got students down out of the table, kids. Um, kids are screaming. Some of the teachers um, are, you know, trying to take control of things. We need police here. Okay, we're getting them there. Who is the student, ma'am? 
I did not know who this student is. Okay. I saw a student outside. I was in hold and hold here, but okay. I was on hold and I saw a gun. I said, what's going on out there? And he said, oh, it's probably for video production. It's probably a joke. I said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. And I went walking outside. I can see this damn thing. See what was going on. And he turned the gun straight at us and shot. And my God, the window went out. And the kid standing there with me, I think he got hit. Okay. I something in my shoulder. Okay. We've got help on the way, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Stay in the line of me. Oh, God. Okay, to stay down. Do we know where he's at? I'm sorry? Do we know where he's at? He, okay. I'm in the library. He's upstairs. He's right outside of here. He's outside? He's outside of this hall. Outside of a hall? Outside of a hall. Okay. okay. There are alarms and things going off. There's smoke. My God, smoke is like coming into this room. Okay. okay. I've got the kids under the table here. I don't know what's happening in the rest okay. of the building. Most of that smoke in the building. I don't know. I'm sure someone has to be calling 911 to fight. Yes, we've got a lot of people on. Okay. I just want you to stay in the line with me. We need to know what's going on. Okay. Okay. I am on the floor. Okay. And you've okay. got the kids in the there. Library. And I've got every student in this library on the floor. You better stay on the floor. Is there any way you can lock the doors? Um, smoke is coming in from out there, and I'm a little okay. afraid. The gun is right outside the library door, okay? I don't think I'm going to go out there. Okay, okay. you're at home in my high school. I got, I got three children. Okay, we got it. Okay? Um, I'm yeah. not going to go to the door to shut the door, okay? I've got the kids on the floor. Um, i got all the kids in the library on the floor. We have paramedics, we have fire, and we have police on route, okay, sir? Okay. Okay. Yes. I mean, he's, I, I don't know, I can't believe he's not out of bullets. He just keeps shooting and shooting and shooting. Okay, yeah, we've got a police officer on scene. I thought it was. Okay, just try and keep the kids in the library calm. Yeah. Is there any way you can block the door so no one can get in? I do, I do not. Okay. I, yeah, I guess I can try to go, but I mean, he's right outside that door. I'm afraid to go to the door. That's okay. That's where he is. I'm not okay. afraid to go there. Okay. That's okay. Okay, I told the kids to get on the floor. I had to get under the table. All of the children are on the floor under the table. Um, um, yeah, they're all under the table. Okay. And as long as we can just try and keep... No one's saying a word. Okay, as long as we can keep everyone there as calm as we can. I hear some yelling out there going on right yeah, now. Yeah, we've got alarms going off now as well. Yeah, there's alarms. This room is filled with smoke. Okay. Okay. Keep everyone low to the floor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Everyone's down. Everyone stay on the floor. Stay on the floor. Stay on to the table. Wow. Okay. I. I don't know. I. Okay. I know. Just. I don't know. I didn't. I said, "What? What is that kid got?" He was outside at the time. And 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 um, I was on call duty. I'm gonna tell God. Um, he's, he's trying, he's like, woo woo woo! Mm -hmm. I know. Things are getting shot off. I do not know who the student was. I don't even know if I saw him, but he's wearing black. He didn't look very large. Um, it's a male student. Um, he was out there shooting. It looked like he was climbing out and shooting him. Somebody, I said, what is that? Mm -hmm. I said, what's going on? He said, it's a cat gun. It's probably for video production. You know, they do these videos. Right. And, and the kids, they just say, well, that's not, you know, a play gun, a real gun. I was going out there to say no. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, I said, oh, my God, that was really close. That just rattled me. Okay. What's your name, ma'am? Patty? Okay. Oh, I have him in the library shooting at the lady that I have in the library on the phone. Okay, try and keep as many people down as you can. Okay. Okay. Do you know who he is? Okay. Okay. 